Thomas Alive Today presents 10 More Defunct Dead Restaurants Ground Round Grill Bar is an American casual dining restaurant that was founded in 1969 in Massachusetts by Howard Johnson's. Since January 17, 2010, Ground Round Independent Owners Cooperative, LLC a group originally formed of 30 franchisee owners, which is based in Freeport, Maine became the owner of Ground Round. During the 1970s and 1980s, Ground Round was well known for its children's parties, showing silent movies and cartoons on a big screen, a mascot named Bingo the Clown and for passing out whole peanuts where consumers were not discouraged from dropping the shells on the floor. At its peak, the chain had over 200 restaurant locations. While the company would continue to post losses into fiscal 1997, during the first quarter of that year Ground Round Incorporated was able to retire over $12 million of debt. The company planned to increase efforts to promote the franchise opportunities within its casual dining chain as a means of more financially conservative expansion and as a means of enhancing recognition of its restaurant's new name. On February 13, 2004 the franchisor for Ground Round filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. In the process, all 69 corporate-owned restaurants, almost half of the Ground Rounds then open, abruptly closed their doors. A group of franchisees joined together in order to buy out the company and started the Ground Round Independent Owners Cooperative. LLC, as of February 2024, the company operates five locations in Maine, North Dakota, and Ohio. Ruby Tuesday Incorporated is an American multinational food service retailer that owns, operates, and franchises Ruby Tuesday restaurants. The concept was started in 1972 by Samuel E. Beale III. The corporation was formed in 1996 as a reincorporation of Morrison Restaurants Incorporated. It is headquartered in Maryville, Tennessee and has 209 locations worldwide, with some temporarily closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Its flagship brand is an American cuisine casual dining restaurant chain with locations throughout the United States aside from the Pacific Coast states. Its greatest density of sites is along the eastern coast of the United States as it closed several locations in the Great Basin and Great Plains regions, including Chicago, in recent years. In 2016, Ruby Tuesday sold the Lime Fresh Mexican Grill rights to an undisclosed buyer to refocus on the main Ruby Tuesday brand. The company has closed all locations of Wak Hay and Marlin and Ray's. Additionally, it holds development rights to Truffles Grill. On June 6, 2012, founder and CEO Sandy Beal announced he would leave the company. In October 2017, it announced that NRD Capital Management would be taking the company private through a $146 million deal in early 2018. Ruby Tuesday filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on Wednesday, October 7, 2020 stating it will permanently close 185 restaurants that had been shut down during the COVID-19 pandemic. After the closures, the company would have 236 company-owned and operated locations and an undisclosed number of sites run by 10 franchisee groups. Ruby Tuesday emerged from bankruptcy on February 24, 2021, with 209 restaurants, having closed more restaurants than initially planned. Koo Koo Roo was an American fast casual restaurant chain specializing in charbroiled chicken founded in 1988 Los Angeles. LA restaurateur Mike Bedalian founded and co-owned the restaurant with his brother Ray. Within two years, the brothers were operating two outlets in Los Angeles one on the corner of Beverly Boulevard and Orlando Avenue and one in Koreatown until one Academy Awards night when the Bedalian's chicken caught the attention of Kenneth Berg. Berg saw a long line of people waiting outside Koo Koo Roo to place their orders. Berg became friends with the Bedalian brothers and threw his financial support behind the concept. 
He first invested $2.5 million as a silent partner. Then, wanting more, he took control of Ku Ku Ru, buying out the Bedalians and assembling an expert management team to expand the restaurant chain and took it in October 1991. With 15 outlets in 1992, Ku Ku Ru weighed options for its recovery, including consolidation. Unfortunately, losses also continued $1.2 million in the quarter ending in September 1995 so expansion for the upcoming year depended on two private placements totaling $18.5 million. Lee Iacocca's Iacocca Capital Partners LP provided $14.3 million, and Iacocca renowned former president of Ford Motor Company and past chairman of Chrysler Corporation joined Ku Ku Ru's board of directors. For new Ku Ku Ru outlets opened in 1996, with 30 additional restaurant openings planned for the year in California, Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, New Jersey, New York, Maryland, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. In 1998, the company decided to close some outlets in the northeastern United States and to exit the Washington, D.C. Beltway market, concentrating instead on the California and Nevada markets. In 2003, the Prandium subsidiaries Ku Ku Ru, Chi Chi's, and Hamburger Hamlet, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. At the time of the filing, Ku Ku Ru had 28 locations, down from 38 in 2001. As the result of the filing, the company was acquired by Magic Brands. Three years later, the number of locations dropped to 13 before Magic Brands closed an additional 10 locations. Luby's acquired Ku Ku Ru and its remaining three locations in 2010 after parent Magic Brands filed for bankruptcy. Luby's sold Ku Ku Ru in 2021 and it is now independently owned. In 1946, Bob Luby hung up his military uniform and began plans with his cousin, Charles R. Johnston, to establish a cafeteria for the post-war era. In the decade following the war, household incomes would rise, families would move from cities to suburbs, and lifestyles calling for convenient products and services would reshape the fabric of American life. The new corporation launched its first cafeteria in March 1960 in a strip shopping center in Corpus Christi and two others followed within 60 days. Although in the black, the three units were not generating the profits normally associated with Luby's cafeterias. Downtown locations proved to be a problem while an experiment to serve breakfast was a mild failure. The corporation forged a link with the original Luby's cafeterias in 1969 when it agreed to manage those units for the next 15 years, bringing the number of corporate managed units to 26, of which 17 were company-owned. Luby and Johnston passed their executive management reins to George Wengline and to Norwood Jones. The year 1980 saw corporate revenues surpass the $100 million mark, and the company adopted a new name, Luby's Cafeterias Incorporated. On February 22, 1982, Luby's entered the financial big league when its stock began trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the LUB symbol and since May 16, 1985, Luby's stock has been included in the Standard & Poor's 500 Composite Stock Price Index. On June 3, 2020, Luby's Board of Directors announced plans to sell all its operating divisions and all assets. This decision was influenced in part by circumstances surrounding the pandemic. Net proceeds from transactions were to benefit Luby's stockholders. The company did not have a definitive timeline for future transactions, but expected to eventually wind down remaining operations. On September 8, 2020, Luby's further announced it has adopted a plan to liquidate all of its existing assets, as opposed to operating in the current form or merely selling off divisions. As of September 11, 2020, 80 Luby's and Fuddrickers were still in operation. About 99% of Luby's stockholders voted for dissolution in November 2020. On June 21, 2021, Calvin Jin agreed to buy 32 Luby's locations for $28.7 million. 
Prior to the announcement of Jin's acquisition, Luby's had planned to close all locations by August 2021. Tijuana Flats was started in 1995 by University of Central Florida graduate Brian Wheeler with $20,000 in loans in Winter Park, Florida. It was modeled after Burrito Brothers, a Mexican restaurant in Gainesville, Florida, and funded with $20,000 in borrowed money from Wheeler's family. Students from Wheeler's former college made up some of the restaurant's early customers. Tijuana Flats had six locations by 2001, which grew to 18 locations in 2004 and 65 by 2009. In 2005, Tijuana Flats built its training center for restaurant managers in Winter Park. Today, the restaurant support and training center is located at the Tijuana Flats HQ in Maitland, Florida, in 2007. Tijuana Flats shifted from a franchise model to corporate-owned stores. That same year Tijuana Flats created its non-profit arm, the Justin Queso Foundation. The foundation donated $46,000 to remodel the home of a handicapped war vet and started donating profits from the Justin Queso hot sauce to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. In late 2015 the company was sold to a UAA private equity firm. Brian Wright was named CEO of the company in 2019. In 2021 the company announced that it would be bringing back its franchising program, which was previously suspended in 2007. In October 2022, Joseph D. Christina was named as the company's new CEO. On April 22, 2024, Tijuana Flats closed 11 restaurants across the state of Florida and filed for bankruptcy, according to a news release. The Central Florida-based restaurant chain is under new ownership with Flatheads LLC. According to a news release, the sale and filing are the culmination of a strategic review that started in November 2023 when the company began exploring various options which had included a potential sale. Bennigan's was established in 1976 in Atlanta, Georgia, as part of the Pillsbury Corporation. The first significant Bennigan's location was opened in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, the following year. The concept was the brainchild of company vice president and steak and ale founder Norman E. Brinker. By the early 1980s Bennigan's had become one of the best known of the new style mid-range casual dining franchised, fern bar, eating and drinking establishments in the U.S. In 1983, Brinker led an exodus of senior management from the Steak and Ale and Bennigan's division, purchasing a small regional restaurant concept that focused on gourmet hamburgers, chilies. Bennigan's continued to grow across the U.S., as well as opening locations in 14 countries. When Pillsbury was acquired by Grand Metropolitan in 1989 later merged with Guinness in 1997 to become Diageo, the company was spun off. As a major liquor distributor selling such brands as Bombay Gin, JB and other spirits, Grand Metropolitan was bound by three-tier laws that prohibited liquor distributors from owning liquor retailers. Steak and Ale Management, underwritten by Metromedia, led the leveraged buyout of Steak and Ale in 1991. In May 2006 Bennigan's closed most of its New York and New England locations as is part of the corporate closure due to the sales downfall. In July 2008, all of Bennigan's 150 corporate locations across the U.S. were closed due to parent company Metromedia Restaurant Group of Plano, Texas filing for Chapter 7 bankruptcy protection and initially the firm's 138 franchisee-owned locations remained open, but many later closed in the months and years after the bankruptcy filing. Several international locations, however, remained open. In South Korea, for instance, over 30 locations still operated as usual. The brand was restructured in 2010. In October 2008, Atalea Capital Management acquired the Bennigan's and Steak and Ale brands. The assets include the Bennigan's franchising company, 
which owned the rights to franchise the Bennigan's brand and was instrumental in keeping franchise-owned restaurants operating during the bankruptcy period. In a statement by the firm, it was stated that the company planned to reposition the brand by re-establishing its place in the high-margin bar segment and by focusing on sandwiches and appetizers. It also said the company planned to reopen 50 or 60 formerly company-owned Bennigan's locations by finding new or existing franchisees to operate the restaurants. On February 11, 2015, CEO Paul Mangiamil and his wife, Gwen, closed on a management buyout of the company from its parent private equity firm, for an undisclosed price. The new company, Legendary Restaurant Brands, LLC, is now the owner of the Bennigan's restaurant chain, its fast casual concept Bennigan's on the fly, and the steak and ale brand. Fudrickers is an American fast casual, franchised restaurant chain was founded as Freddy Fudrickers in 1979 by Philip J. Romano in San Antonio, Texas, at a location converted from an old bank to a restaurant. He started the chain because he thought that the world needed a better hamburger. The Fuddrickers concept was to offer large hamburgers in which the meat was ground on site and buns were baked on the premises and hamburgers and other dishes were offered with lots of fresh sliced tomatoes, onions, lettuce, and vats of cheese sauce. In California, Fuddrickers competed at the high end of the fast food market against chains such as Flaky Jake's, sometimes with head-to-head -head competitions in places such as Northridge, California. By 1988, there were 150 restaurants in the chain. Romano left the chain in 1988 to form Romano's Macaroni Grill. Fuddrickers was purchased in November 1998 by Michael Cannon, and later it was purchased by Magic Brands. The 2008 financial crisis hit the restaurant industry hard, including Fuddrickers. On April 22, 2010, the parent of Fuddrickers, Austin-based Magic Brands LLC, announced plans to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. It originally planned to sell most of its assets, including Fuddrickers and the Koo Koo Roo brand eateries, to the Tavistock Group for $40 million. On the same day, the firm announced that 24 Fuddrickers restaurants would be closed. Several of them in the Metro Washington, D.C. area. On June 18, 2010, Tavistock was outbid by Luby's for Fuddrickers assets at auction, with a $61 million winning bid. A second estimate was that the sale amount was for $63.45 million. Luby's acquisition of Fuddrickers and Koo Koo Roo was finalized in 2010. During 2011, there were controversies with previous franchise owners regarding the use of the Fuddrickers brand name. As of June 2019, Fuddrickers had 156 locations across the United States and globally. On September 8, 2020, Luby's further announced it has adopted a plan to liquidate all of its existing assets, as opposed to operating in the current form or merely selling off divisions. As of September 11, 2020, there were 80 Luby's and Fuddrickers still in operation. 99% of Luby's stockholders voted for dissolution in November 2020. Luby's planned to close all locations by August 2021. On June 17, 2021, Luby's announced that it has entered into an agreement to sell the Fuddrickers franchise business operations to Black Titan Franchise Systems LLC, an affiliate of Nicholas Perkins. As a result, the remaining Fuddrickers locations have remained open past the previously planned closure date of August 2021. The first Sioux Plantation restaurant opened on Mission Gorge Road in San Diego, in 1978. It was the idea of Dennis J., who was a bartender at Springfield Wagon Works, a pioneer in salad bars in El Cajon. Dennis's friends, John Turnbull and Scott King were opening their first soup and salad restaurant The Soup Exchange. Dennis was impressed with the new concept and introduced Steve Hohe, the Springfield restaurant manager and Ron Demery, a bail bondsman and friend of John and Scott. 
Dennis, Steve and Ron decided to partner to create a parallel concept, the Soup Plantation. The two concepts grew side by side in a friendly, mutually supportive, yet competitive environment for several years. This restaurant and a second one in Point Loma were purchased in 1983 by Garden Fresh Restaurant Corp., founded by Michael Mack to operate the chain. The company expanded across the American West and Southwest, and also opened locations in several Southeast states. In October 2016, Garden Fresh Restaurant Corp., the owner-slash-operator of Soup Plantation and Sweet Tomatoes, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. In March 2020, all of the restaurants closed due to state and local government-mandated shutdowns as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic. On May 7, 2020, the company announced it would be closing all Soup Plantation and Sweet Tomatoes locations permanently amid concerns that new federal guidelines recommending an end to self-serve stations would prevent local health departments from granting permits to restaurants with salad bars and buffets. Garden Fresh Restaurants, the parent company to both Soup Plantation and Sweet Tomatoes, filed for Chapter 7 liquidation the following week on May 14. At the time of the announcement, the company had 4,400 employees and 97 restaurants. In May 2022, a Soup Plantation restaurant not formally associated with the former company was announced. The location was set to open in La Mesa, California in mid-2022, but in July was delayed without a current opening date, and there are conflicting reports on whether the new restaurant will include recipes owned by the original company. Later reports indicate that the plans to reopen Soup Plantation on La Mesa are not happening and will instead be replaced by a Golden Life ADHC daycare. In March 2023, ST3 LLC purchased the exclusive rights and intellectual property assets of Soup Plantation slash Sweet Tomatoes and plans to reopen one former location in Tucson, Arizona on Broadway and Wilmot Road. There are currently no plans to reopen other locations. Sandy's was a chain of American fast food restaurants begun in 1956 by four entrepreneurs from Kewanee, Illinois, Gus Brick, Lundberg, Robert C. Wenger, Paul White and W. K. Davidson set out to start one of the first McDonald's franchises outside the McDonald brothers of Richard James McDonald and Maurice James McDonald home state of California. Ray Kroc had just begun selling McDonald's franchises outside California and the four friends partnered to buy the right to open McDonald's restaurants in central Illinois. In June 1956, they opened their first restaurant in Urbana, Illinois, only the third McDonald's restaurant to open outside California. The Urbana, Illinois store proved popular with students, professionals, and young families at the University of Illinois. It did so well that the group decided to open additional stores in Decatur and Peoria, Illinois. However, Ray Kroc notified them that Peoria and Decatur, Illinois were not included in the Central Illinois Territory, and furthermore, that changes to the terms of the franchise meant they would owe a higher percentage of their profits to McDonald's. Having invested heavily in the Peoria location, including erecting the building, Lundberg and his partners decided instead to open their own restaurant, and settled on the name Sandy's. The chain adopted a Scottish-based theme to combat the Scottish-rooted McDonald's. Even though the latter was not based on a cultural theme of any kind. Lundberg was named president. Ray Kroc did not act indifferently. He filed an ongoing series of lawsuits which finally ended with an out-of-court settlement in 1965. Despite this distraction, Sandy's grew from seven stores in Illinois in 1959 to 121 in five states in 1966. In 1961, insurance man Jack Laffery was so impressed with Lundberg and his business approach that he left a successful practice to join Sandy's, becoming president in 1967. By the end of the 1960s, Sandy's, though still successful, was short of cash, and Hardee's chain had money to expand its operations. On November 30, 1971, a 
Hardee's purchase of all of Sandy's stock was announced, and Sandy's was no more. Originally, Sandy's was only to merge with Hardee's and maintain its own identity, but in 1973, 90% of the locations agreed to switch to Hardee's, the other 10% remained Sandy's. In 1979, the last Sandy's location in Muscatine, Iowa, became a Hardee's. Any remaining locations went under independent ownership and changed their names to avoid infringing on the Sandy's name. These locations included Zandy's in Great Falls, Montana until it closed in January 2009 after a break-in and declining profits, Sandy's in Billings, Montana, Andy's in Cincinnati, Ohio and Bucky's in Lawrence, Kansas and Winona, Minnesota until it closed down on December 14, 2007 and November 5, 1989 respectively. Cheeseburger in Paradise was a casual dining theme restaurant chain in the United States that opened on August 19, 2002, in the Southport area of Indianapolis, Indiana. It is a theme restaurant named for the song, Cheeseburger in Paradise, by American pop music singer Jimmy Buffett. The chain was a partnership of Buffett's company, The Orlando, Florida-based Margaritaville Holdings LLC, and OSI Restaurant Partners, with Buffett licensing the name and Outback Steakhouse operating the franchising of restaurants. In September 2009, Cheeseburger in Paradise was sold to Paradise Restaurant Group, LLC. Jimmy Buffett was only a royalty partner, receiving 2% of profits until selling Paradise Restaurant Group the rights to the song, Cheeseburger in Paradise. In December 2012, Luby's purchased Paradise Restaurant Group for $11 million, thereby acquiring all of the restaurants and ending Jimmy Buffett's association with the chain. At the time of the sale, the company had 23 locations in 14 states. After acquisition by Luby's, a number of the chain's locations were closed. In August 2014, Luby's announced to management and employees that half of the chain's remaining restaurants would close, either immediately or in the following few weeks. Affected restaurants included many of the locations were to be rebranded Fuddrucker's Deluxe Bar and Grill, another concept owned by Luby's and a full-service version of their Fuddrucker's chain. Ultimately not all of them were, including the one in Fishers, Indiana and California, Maryland. In August 2018, all restaurants except for the Omaha, Nebraska, and Secaucus, New Jersey, locations were closed, including the original restaurant in Indianapolis. The Omaha location closed in early October 2018. The last remaining cheeseburger in Paradise location was in Secaucus which closed in 2020. All existing assets was liquidated by the end of 2020. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.